Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. It's that time again, and we're back in the hot seat. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa, where we roll up our sleeves and take on topical issues for a better society. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. In other words, we tell it like it is. I'll be taking us down the history lane as I revisit the Kiriji War, the world's longest civil war. Seydou will be joining us remotely today, on the other hand. He shares with us the lessons learned from the COVID-19 pandemic. He's asking, has Nigeria done well in preparing for health emergencies? We'll find out soon. Liberos highlights our governance pattern in Nigeria and reminds us that any abandoned project is governance abandoned. And in another light, Evans tells us something interesting about what he calls the Ogogoro cocktail. Huh. That's funny. Last but not the least, though a popular face on TV and social media, but a fresh advocate here, Jumoke is worried about our Nigerian youths who place all their focus on reality TV shows. She's asking, Nigerians, who bewitched you? You can see from our lineup today that we are not averse to rocking the boat in the interest of genuine stability. I'm up first, after the break. Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Martin Luther King once said that we're made by history and I'm going down the memory lane in what I title Revisiting the Kiriji War. The Kiriji Ikitse Parapo War fought by the Yoruba for 16 years is believed to be the world's longest civil war by any ethnic group. It ended 134 years ago on 23rd September 1886. Broadly, Ibadan was a superpower which military successes and wealth led to an expansionist program after the collapse of the Oyo Kingdom. This met with resistance as vassal states groaned under heavy taxation known as Ishakole. It was a fierce battle that ravaged all of the Yoruba nation. Essentially, Ibadan wanted a forcefully united Yoruba nation with a centralized government, while the other Yoruba subgroups wanted a decentralized structure where all the federating units will be autonomous and will be able to plan their political future based on their own heritage. Now, doesn't that mirror the struggle of Nigeria presently? At the 60th independence, many nations within Nigeria are asking for autonomy. The Kiriji War compares favorably with other epic battles anywhere in the world. In modern times, it will compare with the Battle of Normandy in Europe. Recently, War veterans and presidents converged on France to commemorate its 75th anniversary. 
What is interesting about this piece of history is that the theater of the war were warlords like Arelato Shalvi Badon, Balugu Gedingbe of Elisha, and Prince Fabumi of Okemesi fought, still exists today. Same for their war camps, including the site where the peace treaty was signed. Although the treaty site has the Beregu tree, popularly known as Dragon Tree, from the two warring sides, Ibu Latosha is recognizable with another Beregu tree, while Ibu Ogedingbe is recognizable with the Aga Ogedingbe, the chair of Ogedingbe, earned from a rock. Sadly, these sites have not been preserved as they ought to, neither have they been recognized as heritage sites. The cenotaph on which the 12 articles of the treaty were inscribed is weather beaten while the roofs of surrounding structures are falling off from decay. My advocacy is that the Kiriji Ekitsik Parako War can be reenacted for the purpose of history in the mold of Western films such as The Black Panther, Game of Thrones, and the Greek classics like 300. Both Oke Messi, a border town in Ekiti today, where the war started, and in Messile in Oshun State, the battlefield and the site of the peace treaty, signed by 24 kings after a stalemate that necessitated the intervention of the British, should be recognized as national monuments and heritage sites of the Yoruba nation, just as the Oshun Grove in Oshubu. Oshun and Ekiti State should give this theater of war where many people died and peace was made for the Yoruba land, its befitting status and investment as tourist destinations. A people without an appreciation of history risk losing a vital part of them. Our children need to go on proper site visits to know about the bravery and chivalry of their ancestors. They need to know that their forebears were men of valor. And the history of the Kiriji War needs to be retold and revisited. Except it's a white man that is telling the story. It is not. Otherwise, you won't, uh, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise it, won't, um, it won't look like Kiriji War. It might look like, uh, um, uh, what do you call this prison? Uh, Which prison? No, no. Uh, what's this prison um, in Lagos now? Kiriji. Imagine it would, might look like Kiriji War. <laughs> You know, because we 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 don't. Um, I, I think Jumoke said something just before the program that when cameras were made, you know, they didn't have the black man in mind, and and so we have a way of telling our stories. But when it comes to replicating them in movies, is a big thing. And unfortunately, that same story we're already telling it in Nigeria is rewriting itself, and then sadly, um, while we should use these as monuments. These are what we travel abroad to go see. Precisely. I mean, My look at what's going me, on at Atlanta. Jesus Christ was buried according to the Jewish tradition. Yes. Yes. So when you go to these places, these are the sites that you go to visit. Yes. But unfortunately, us had been washed away by, you know, our lack of a sense of belonging. Quite unfortunate. Um, is it a lack of sense of belonging or colonialism where we were forced to pretend like we didn't have a heritage and a culture. Because I know, for instance, that if we had been left to grow, like we were growing before the colonialists came, we were already, um, for instance, we didn't have a Ligua Franca, yeah. but the Yoruba trader found a way to communicate with the Hausa trader. Yeah. You know, to the extent we started having some common you know, words in both languages mm, because, like Lubasa, uh -huh, the rest of Bahala, you the know, rest of so if we had been allowed to grow, you know, the way we were growing without the interruption of colonialism, we would have found a way to tell our own story in our own ways. You know, you know. But, but even at that, even at that, because as at the time we existed, before we were colonized, mm. Uh, the Berlin Conference had already balkanized through a treaty. <laughs> so there's no way we wouldn't have been taken. But <laughs> after decolonization, after decolonization, we should have been able to build for ourselves capacity. Because most of the time, it's either we're blaming the white men or we're blaming the military or mm. we're blaming the, the, the current leaders who are not doing the right thing. But I think that from your advocates, I see that even our history, 
okay, like the one you shared now, is as tight as what was showcased to us as the Game of Thrones. But the yeah. problem is that the, that, leaders, that the leaders that we are handed over to us are not the ones that would want you to replicate those history or that will work at what you inherited to make it better because mm. it won't benefit. No, working from the history, working on the history is, is a question of creating art out of the huge say the, depth of our, our content, yes. historical content. Right. I, say think, the, I think, in my own opinion, I think uh, we have a major catastrophe. First thing first, Africa is blessed with very, very rich history. We have a rich history. We have um, cultures that it's an is an, it's an envy for the rest of the world. Sadly, our generations, the younger generations, they, with the advent of uh, TV, DSTV, all of these things are gradually fizzling away. How many young people today can actually speak their dialects? Hmm. It starts from there, right? And government has not, they've now helped us, or they've helped our situation by removing history from the curriculum in school, you know? So how can you celebrate a history? Imagine what happened with uh, Fela, Af Af the Afro big king. He could have just fizzled out, but it took an American, uh, it took, um, Broadway. Uh, what's his name, to celebrate him. And today it brought prominence to that individual who would have been celebrated locally. So we're not, if we don't celebrate our own culture here, we can't get that kind of prominence out there. We need to recognize that our culture is ours. We need to, to, to uh, package it well in a way that the rest of the world, it will be sellable okay. to the rest of the world. So the work has to be done locally. We need to uh, intensify, um, uh, what do you call it? Education. Right, we need you to know, intensify. Educate our kids on the, our, the history, all the rich history we have in this country and package it. I right. think there's, we still have a long way to go. What honestly. strikes but me? But that fault is not solely <laughs> the government, it's us as a people, even, all of us sitting here, how many of our kids can speak our dialect the way it should be spoken? How many of them do we take for the traditional things we do? You know, how many of them have we told our stories, the rich heritage, the rich stories we have? So we're all part and parcel of this problem. Okay, and we Sadie. need to be intentional to ensure that. Okay, Sadie. <laughs> Sadie is going to go on and on. But you see, you know what, Lib, what you said has struck me is that except it, it's a white man bringing it. Yes, and if yes. we're not careful, the yeah. white man will package our history they are already and sell it and to us. They're already doing you. that. Our pigeon English that we have, that and we do nothing to about us. it. The radio station today has packaged it and for us. Um, and they're using it as content. And just are, imagine are, the Kiriji Do You know that a woman was right at the center of it. Yes. Someone beheaded somebody else's woman. And that sparked uh, some sort of you know, Civil war. yeah, and they said, No, this is not going to be, you know, imagine if that was put in a series, in a movie. Oh, my yeah. goodness, like that sort of Game of Thrones. Yes. But when um, we say that it is you and I to do it, is it profitable for us to do? I think so, because um, we would rather our children learn. Um, Chinese or French, international languages. That will be profitable to them. That will be profitable to them. Ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll come back to this. But well, yeah. a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. Saido is up next after the break. <laughs>